ever wondered how to use microtones to spice up your jazz harmonies? Totally. I thought I was the only one thinking about that. Then let's dive right into it. The rabbit hole goes really deep on this one. In between the lines. Scales are a bunch of notes ordered according to the pitch, usually organized within an octave. At least in Western music. 31 Ted can reproduce all scales that we are already familiar with, but because of the nature of 31 Ted, it will enable crazy twists and multiple versions or isotopes of some scales. We decided to structure the topic as follows. Scale steps in 31 Ted, same scale, new flavor, symmetrical scales and the potential to modulate, and overtonal scales and other novelties. A scale in 12 Ted usually follows a pretty simple concept. Take the smallest possible step size, a semitone, and the second smallest, a whole tone, and combine a mix of them together until you reach the next octave. Semitones are usually used as leading tones to indicate the gravitational pull of a given scale. Of course, there are scales that use other 12 Ted intervals, but the point remains. Differently sized small steps added together within an octave form a scale. So this is where we start. In 31 Ted, the smallest step size is the fifth tone, or diesis. Why fifth tone? Because 31 splits its whole tones into five equal parts. This is how we call them. Fifth tone, chromatone, diatone, neutratone, and whole tone. The fifth tone is only about 40 cents in size, and therefore around 60 cents smaller than the 12 Ted semitone. The fifth tone chromatic scale finally justifies the word chromatic because of how immensely colorful it is. Since all notes are equally spaced, it can be used for ornaments, glissandi, or other playful stuff. We haven't dabbled around with other scales with fifth tones yet, but these uses are already fantastic. Instead, we looked for the next two smaller step sizes, and this is where it gets really interesting. As already mentioned, the 12 Ted semitone measures 100 cents. The chroma and diatone, however, are 80 and 120 cents in size, so they're almost equidistant from the western semitone. The explanation for that lies within the fact that there's no more enharmonic equivalence in 31 Ted. Check out this as an example. The distance from E to F is three fifth tones, so a diatone. E to E sharp is only two fifth tones, a chroma tone. E sharp and F are not the same note anymore in 31 Ted. This way, the approximation of the 12 Ted chromatic scale can be played in many different ways in 31. Only using chroma tones, only using diatones, or using different mixtures of both. But keep one thing in mind. Although the first two options maintain the familiar equidistant structure, it loses synchronicity at the octave. It would take all of 31 Ted's chroma tones played in a row to reach the second octave above the starting pitch. And for diatones, it would be the third octave above. A mixture of both can easily reach the octave by simply deciding to insert the missing interval to reach the first octave. This will also make the halftone whole tone scale really interesting, because there's always two options for each time a halftone is needed. It could sound like this, for example. Sounds wobbly. I like it. Basically, we're already in the middle of our next bullet point. We can recreate popular scales in 31 tone equal temperament. Can you guess which of these are in 12 and which are in 31? The structure and organization are very similar in 31 Ted. Only the sound of certain intervals is now altered and slightly retuned. You can basically recreate every common church mode by only using whole tones and diatones. This applies to lots of the modes that we use and know in jazz. 
But the possibilities in 31 TED do not end with Western scales. The fifth tone grid makes Arabic makamat playable, for example, within the same tuning system. Simplified, it could be said that the Arabic tonal grid consists of quarter tones, although in practice it is way more adaptive and fluid than Western music and its tuning theory. The Jin's Rast, for example, consists of these five scale degrees. It shares lots of similarities with the first five degrees of the major or minor scale. Yes, you heard right. All notes are approximately the same, but the third is in between the major and the minor third. As we already talked about in the last episode covering the blues, this in-between note can be in many different places. But hey, at least it can be played at all in 31 TED, using the neutral third, 9 fifth tones. So 31 TED can smoothly connect Occidental harmony with Oriental melody. Awesome! Let's go back to symmetrical scales. Scales like the whole tone half tone, or the approximation of the 12th TED chromatic scale, can be built in different ways in 31. And we left out another fun scale, the whole tone scale. A whole tone in 31 TED consists of five fifth tones, meaning it won't reach the octave after six steps. Given the fact that it barely misses the octave, it can be used to modulate down a fifth tone. In that regard, it's similar to the diminished and augmented structures we already talked about in episode two of the series. There are not only the common scales, newly spelled and non-Western scales possible in 31 TED, but also strange new scales. You can create your own scales and you have even more options to do so in 31 than you had in 12. That's why we'll only introduce you to one new scale. Sometimes you hear the overtone series being played on the piano like this. Not only does it come to its limitations quite quickly, but it's also sacrilegiously out of tune. In 31 TED it will sound a lot better. You probably noticed how it is in the nature of the overtone series to have constantly shrinking steps. Each new octave gets divided into twice as many intervals as the octave preceding it. So the intervals shrink on and on, at first rapidly, then ever slower, approaching infinity. There's this sweet spot, or rather a sweet area, between the 8th and the 16th overtone. This is the area where it meets our hearing expectation what a scale should sound like most. It spans an octave, consists of 7 or 8 notes, and uses step sizes that are between whole and semitones. This is how it would sound and look like in 31. Keep in mind that it is only an approximation. This is why step sizes repeat consecutively even though in reality they're all different. We start with two whole tones, followed by three neutral tones, and three diatones. It doesn't only try to sound like the overtone series, but also sounds kind of similar to another jazz scale. It reminds us of the Mixolydian sharp 11 scale with an added major 7th. Because it features the major 3rd and harmonic 7th, we decided it could be functionally seen as a weird kind of dominant scale. Given its structure, we named it the Shrinking Dominant Scale. And though the odds are improbable, what do they do? Lastly, you could try to form chords out of the scale, like in common theory. The benefit of this scale is that all the notes are approximations of the overtones of the root, and therefore shouldn't clash that much. At this point though, terminology reaches its limitations. I mean, is an augmented sus chord really a thing? Check out what your ears like, and don't get distracted by how fancy the chord symbols might look. A combination of the 14th, 11th and 13th overtone, for example, works really well for us. So now that we have explored the rich potential of scales, it's time to use the knowledge we've accumulated so far to top up the final episode of the series with a rearrangement of a standard to put all of this theory into practice. In the meantime, check out our channel and stay tuned.